Hello my soccer universe for a new uh, feeling in a way this is for the first time that in a long time if ever that I'm doing a review of the two Bundesligas and there's no Lusk jersey anywhere and they do not deserve to be there what a crappy game they pulled out with and we'll talk about that where it's the same pattern that we had just before the international break they dominate a game they don't make the first goal then they concede a goal and it all falls apart and it's just damning 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 however the big story in austria is of course the vnd starby which for a first time in seven games brought a winner and again rapid vienna cannot win at home uh, so that was uh definitely interesting also um it's getting tight on the bottom again with reed pulled pulling out a surprise win however this video will be mostly about the classica uh where yeah dortmund came back for an uncharacteristic draw you, we don't see that i mean for the most time of the, of the game i thought this is a typical bayern win at dortmund dortmund try as they might bayern are just ruthless getting the job done and yeah they came back i don't know what this means for the bundesliga yet but i think we will hold no a whole lot more about the overall bundesliga in the next round because it's still uh, Union and Freiburg that are uh, top of the table uh, there uh, and there have there has been of course enough controversy around the Klassica uh, so we'll take a good portion there um, and of course the other big game was the Rhein Derby between Gladbach and Köln where honestly while Gladbach really did deserve that win but I think it's more or less Köln that shot themselves in the foot and mostly the Austrian players there Let's go though to Austria first. Uh, yeah. The results from the past weekend. Uh, Klangfurt lost now 2-1. Uh, then we had Alltag giving Salzburg again a scare. And I think this is a Salzburg team that is very much now concentrating on the champ Champions League because last week against Lusk, where, uh, yes, they played well overall, but Lusk probably would have deserved the win in the end, which they didn't, they, uh, didn't here. Uh, yes, they take the lead 1-0, they make it up to 3-1, um, but it is a, a much, a very close game overall, so um, Salzburg a little bit toying with the Bundesliga at the moment. However, IS has already, already said uh, it is all about uh, Lusk for me here. A game that, honestly, at halftime, you should have been up by two goals twice hit the woodwork it started a little bit even and hardback is an opponent that last had a hard time beating i think we haven't beaten them now in seven games which is staggering given the uh, the financial possibilities of these two teams it's just uh, not on the same level however the one thing that hard they have they have with us it's not he's not a great goal goal goalkeeper but it's it's a goalkeeper who really profits from uh if he gets a lot of saves in he becomes nigh unbeatable uh, there are uh, two goal goal goals that, that uh, nowhere near the national team in general. However, they can get hot, and he always runs hot against Lusk because Lusk has a penchant for not converting chances, and that's exactly what I feared with this team. That you need to make the first for first goal, and you know, however, hits the post. I think Goigner hits the crossbar. Uh, they had numerous chances, and yeah. It is on one side a uh, human uh, to see balls go above, uh, away from goal. That's all right. And even before, uh, even when the second half kicked off, there was another really good chance. However, what cannot happen is that a from a kick out, you concede because you're not positioned well. Where Fadinger intercepts, goes to Krivak, and he then has a free, a free on goal, and then you fold. That was, there was no reaction to what was happening there. And this is what really, really irks me. Um, Tadic, second chance for Hartberg. Literally, second chance for Har, 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 Hartberg. A ball falls to Tadic. I don't think he's related to the Tadic from Ajax. Pulled, pulls it in the 79th. However, a very similar goal. And in between nothing, they just folded. And this is my biggest gripe with Lusk over... Since the beginning of the, of the season, I think they play well. They've been very successful, especially against big opponents. They really give the fight. They can hang in there, even beat them. Against small opponents, and especially at home where there's still a small pitch here, yeah, moving to the big stadium, and that don't, it's not an issue, but I think the small pitch allows um, 
opponents to kind of keep the game tight and they don't have really the means to break them down which is ridiculous with the quality they have up front honestly um but the other thing is they have only been pl they usually play only for at most 60 minutes and then it kind of falls falls away the only fully 90 minute game was the one against salzburg and again in the last 10 10 minutes they went a little bit too defensive for my liking so yeah this is something that has that I think has to be addressed, but is not addressed enough in the media uh, because the media is still very much pandering to, to the coach. Uh, but I think this is a characteristic I have now observed for quite a while and I don't like it one bit. Uh, I also didn't necessarily like the Sunday result. I mean, Sturm against Tirol was expected 2-1, but Reed uh, winning at Wolfsburg, uh, yeah, I shouldn't like it. They are the rivals, so uh, in that sense, I, I, I did like them. Oh, the other thing is better for Reed is in the, in the league. Uh, but yeah, uh, was a shocker, but the big one and even away days went to the derby, uh, although a little bit too rapid friendly for my liking, but uh, watch his video, I think it, it, it gives a good feeling. Uh, the only thing that sucks about the VNE story, or, or maybe not sucks for, from my, my perspective, that the teams are not good at this moment. This was the last time that this derby made out really for a title challenge was about 20 years ago, when then the derby's when is usually even played at, at the biggest stadium, although I don't think they would go to the Hapur Stadium uh, at this moment. This derby uh, was decided very early on with Hushkovic uh, scoring a really nice goal uh, where the rapid defense didn't look and it's again from their own from a kick out from a rapid Viviana that is in the, in intercepted and it goes really quickly towards the goal and then uh, Fitz is brought down in the box and it's a penalty there was a chance to come back for rapid uh, they had a good chance early on in the second half then they got a penalty that was take, taken away and the only thing that can come was a goal in stoppage time but overall, another really disappointing uh, performance for Rapid Vienna. And of course, and you see it in the away this video as well. Uh, afterwards, Rapid fans storm ultra storming the pitch and running towards the Austria fans to kind of because they were celebrating their own stadium. The one thing, as nice as the stadium, uh, the new stadium for Rapid Vienna is, it's on the same position uh, as the old one, but uh, they completely rebuilt as nice as this is. It. Ever since they moved in there, I always had the feeling that Rapid Vienna cannot get anything going. They're in essential turmoil, which is so counterintuitive because usually new stadium, you actually play better. Not a Rapid Vienna. It completely backfired them, although financially they're doing quite well. But you know, you gotta get away from the museum culture, I guess. Uh, so in the standings, Lusk still third, but now it's getting tight. I mean, this is halfway point of the regular season. I think it's a fair assessment. Uh, Lask did well against the big teams, did badly against the poorer teams. So I guess that, that's where Salzburg, of course, are the Lies and Sturm Graz are right behind. They have already beaten Salzburg. So I guess um, it's a good pick picture. It also tells, it tells you that the Wien, well, what I said, I mean, Austria Wien is doing probably a little bit better. They have the three point deduction that would put them uh, in fourth place. Rapid Vienna is really, really in trouble despite having a relatively good start to the season. And we already see it will be a really, really tight battle for relegation. Altach and Ried at the moment are all are the two that are really, really stru struggling. Although Hartberg could get, and Lustenau, I think, could get dragged into it. Lustenau. Uh, having a good standing thanks to a very very good start where they were fourth but I actually think they might come down a little a bit uh, if we look here expect final regular season it's more or less the same as we had before uh, and the final uh, you know Rapid Vienna is still thought of making it into the top uh, six and I would agree with that because uh, they're just too, too good. It would, it, it, it would be a shock at the moment though it's Klagenfurt in the top six again ahead of Wolfsburg. That would be uh, a little bit of a surprise I have to say but they already made it last season there. Uh, the upcoming round has Klagenfurt play against Lusk uh, that must win. Cannot say more. And then we have actually two really interesting games with Sturm against Wolfsburg um, and Austria Vienna against Salz Salzburg. I think though, uh, especially the last one could be an interesting one. Although uh, Salz Salzburg has a tendency to kind of make these games non-competitive very quickly. However, they're still playing Champions League. So that's a big one. After that, there will be a cup round, but we'll talk about this in next week's video. Let's move over to Germany. I'm wearing Werder Bremen. They are continuing. They're really, really good, good run. 
even in Hoffenheim, where they took overall a, a, a deserved lead through Dux in the 18th minute, uh, but the Boer can equalize. And then the game kind of a little bit peters out, but I think that Bremen was really uh, well, especially in the first, first half, showing that they're a team to be reckoned with. And I'm, I am personally very happy. I always had a like for Bremen. Yes, with having many Austrians uh, always helps. But uh, in general, I think they're a really a nice club. And I hope that they, they will stay in, which I think at the moment we can def definitely say. And even more, they have a tendency to score late and they again did it with a Füllkrug penalty. Uh, yeah, I think it was a, overall, one can say it was the right call, but at, at, at first the referee didn't give it. But as soon as when it went to wide, it was clear that it will be. Bremen continuing high and they are the big winners of this round, at least statistically. Uh, from the Saturday games, honestly haven't followed them too much. Augsburg play 1-1 one -one against Wolfsburg. Leverkusen under new coach Xabi Alonso get a big win over Schalke. And it seems like Schalke, another team that I actually really like and would like to have in the Bundesliga. But they seem, seem to be a relegation candidate if they continue this form. Um, Leverkusen having no problem... Um, disposing them 4-0 um, and, you know, making up for the 4-0 loss to Bayern. I think from this moment on, we will see Leverkusen rise. Will they challenge for Europe? That's the big question. But I think overall, I think Leverkusen will be uh, will not be in relegation trouble. I, I really can't imagine it. A really weird game was a 3-0 win for Bochum against Frankfurt, which had, it was so similar to what Lask did at Hartberg. Frankfurt was controlling game and creating chances. I'm not saying they played great. They... Uh, far from it however it was Bochum that just you know when you do not convert your chances you end up con con conceding and this is exactly what happened when Hoffman went in the 71st uh, one 1-0 uh, uh, and then it got late um, the game got out of him with goals in the 87th and then stoppage time to make the 3-0 win which is not indicative how that game went uh, but it was definitely uh, Frankfurt who looked really good this was a blow to their ambitions for sure. Uh, and Mainz against Leipzig is 1-1. A few seasons ago, this would have been always a big win for Leipzig. But meanwhile, Mainz is a serious team. Um, and I actually think this is uh, good for the league. But as I said, uh, it's all about the Klassiker. And honestly, I saw most of it thanks to Lask being so bad. It was 3-0 for Hartberg uh, right at the time when the Klassiker started. So I went over there. And it was a game that got going relatively slow. Uh, but it was Dortmund that had most of the control and I think the biggest uh, call in the early stage was a yellow card for Bellingham that seemed a little bit harsh, uh, but I guess the referee wanted to kind of set the tone. I, I, I really like uh, uh, referee Aitekin. Overall, I think he is a very well-liked um, uh, referee within Germany. He's very communicative uh, and so... I just think he wanted to settle the game there and gave maybe a relatively harsh yellow card, but that came back to bite him a little bit. The other characteristic was that with the first real chance of the game uh, for Bayern, they score. And it was not good defending because Goretzka, former Schalke player of course, uh, is outside of the, of the box and has a free shot on goal and it goes in. Uh, and that completely unsettled Dortmund for, for, for a while and from that moment on Bayern had control. And most uh, notably, um, we had then that uh, there was another foul from Bellingham on uh, Davis, where he wants to play it, play ball, but, um, you know, kind of uh, keep, keep it up his style, but hits Davis on the head. Uh, he would have hit the ball if Davis wasn't there. And I think most Bayern fans uh, who are more sympathetic with Bayern would say this should have been a yellow red for Bellingham and he's off. And the referee admitted as much that he was very well aware of that after the game and said, you know, you need to show some empathy because the first one was harsh. So I, it would have been too much to send him off for these two yellow cards. And I think sending him off and therefore deciding the game in favor of Bayern was not what he wanted to do in that sense. Now we can argue left and right whether this was the right call. Uh, the one thing is that Davis had to come off and he uh, had to uh, be looked at in the hospital. So, you know, <sighs> give or take. I think it really could have gone both ways. And I think I was, I personally, but I'm more on the Dortmund side in that game, was happy that he stayed, stayed on. But I think there would have been no complaints if he would have been sent off.
I honestly, you cannot really complain. Um, second half, as I said, um, Bayern then made a few changes to get a little bit more control. Even when I mean, Savica came, came, uh, came off Gnabry and Davis all, all came off and Kimi come on and Stanisic, the latter let, was an un, relatively unknown quality, came on. Um, and Bayern, more or less with the second chance, made the second goal and then uh, seemed to be firmly in control of that game. Dortmund needed to do something. They bring on Adeyemi, they bring on Modest, um, try to uh, wrestle control back. But I have, I have to say, I was watch, watching game and thinking about the headline for this video already. I said, the perfect is same old, same old. I mean, Bayern is just ruthless and get the job done. However, suddenly Mukoko plays the ball, uh, Modest plays the ball to Mukoko, who has been actually really, really good in this game. And he puts it in and it's 2 1. 74th minute. Game on. Uh, for some reason, I really thought that Bayern could hold, hold up, but then a crucial second yellow card for Kingsley Coleman in the 90th gives actually Dortmund a man advantage. And here this was a little bit more because both of the fouls that he he, he did were cynical fouls, which are clearly a yellow card. Now, I understand. Was this a little bit rough? Yes, it was. Dortmund, though, really didn't seem to get a big chance until I got one. Where a deep ball um, is just saved by Schlotterbeck in front of the line. And I thought that most Bayern players at that moment had switched off. There were a few corner corners where even the goalie uh, came, came up. But they never could create a chance there. But at that one, Schlotterbeck keeps the ball in. And then with a really, we call it buttery soft cross on the head to, uh, towards Modest, who makes it 2-2 and finally gets his goal. His head has been under intense criticism as well. And Dortmund get a famous draw. And this is where we are in the Bundesliga. It's not a victory, although it felt definitely a victory for Dortmund, that one. Um, and actually keeping Bayern away from taking the top of the table, uh, a sign of things to come, uh, we got to see. I was also hoping for a really entertaining gladbach Köln game. Of course, I'm more for the Köln side of things. Um, gladbach took a lead, but Kainz is fouled, gets the penalty, equalizes, and then it all falls apart. Ljubicic, another Austrian player, uh, has to come off for a relatively rough foul. Uh, Köln coach was uh, demanding a red there, potentially, but then a really stupid... Um, Elbowing within the penalty box sees kind sense sent off with a second yellow card and a penalty. It's 2 1 again. Benzevaini and Stindl after the half makes it 3 1. At that moment, the game wasn't interesting any, anymore to me because I never thought that Curl could, could come back and it ends. Uh, 5 2 Benzevaini scoring in the 76th and Curl pulled one back through uh, Husen Basic uh, before Tioram makes it uh, prob probably deserved 5 2 scoreline. Freiburg, uh, despite taking lead, were 2-1 down at Hertha, however, can get an equalizer and Union Berlin get a late win at Stuttgart, stay top of the table where Freiburg um, cannot uh, stay. Because if you see now at the table, Union Berlin have a two-point lead, staying up there, Freiburg behind and whatever happens next round, Union Berlin off, uh, will be up there, Bayern cannot take top of the table. I just want to note this. Freiburg could take it. It will be only Berlin or Freiburg after next uh, round. It will be taught out of the table. However, it works out. But I want you to have that in mind when, when we look at the next fixtures. Um, it's a rather tight league overall. I mean, we have Bremen, Gladbach with 15, Hoffenheim, Frankfurt, four, uh, 14, even Köln and Augsburg with 13 are in there. And even Leipzig and Mainz. I mean, uh, the, the only cut is from Wolfsburg on it. I even think that Leverkusen will uh, make a, a charge up. I do not like seeing Schalke and Stuttgart down there, but I'm, a, I'm afraid they are relegation fodder. And let's see if Bochum can make an escape um, like other teams have done uh, so far. In the expected final standings, it is, as I said, Bochum, Schalke, Stuttgart, uh, Leverkusen still much higher up than, than they are in Le and Leipzig, still expected to finish in the top four with Union still in there as well. Freiburg and Gladbach rounding it out and, you know, the cup uh, winner uh, would go in, but if he's one of the top, I think then it would be. Uh, then the seventh space spot gets in as, as well. But, you know, the only thing that seems to be a foregone conclusion is Bayern first, Dortmund second and Bochum down. So far, as I said, upcoming games, we have a really interesting round uh, again, and it's all about the last two games where the um, 
established powers, Dortmund and Bayern take on the current leaders. And I think it will be really, really, really interesting. It will tell us a whole lot about Union Berlin and about Freiburg. I would expect Bayern to win against Freiburg, but I can see Union Berlin winning against Dortmund. This will be a very, very interesting round. I am absolutely certain. There are also other interesting games in there, like a Frankfurt against Leverkusen, uh, for sure. Bremen against Mainz is kind of a hipster game. It was even Leipzig against Hertha, although Hertha has not been all that good. So, in any case, um, that's it from me. Now it's your turn. Please let me know what you thought about this week's action in Germany and Austria. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.